Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Thrones of Britannia comes to Linux, by the way, of Vulcan, and did you know that Paradox has its own client? Yeah, for their games. More importantly, it's going to be coming to Linux. Rocket League starts integrating FSV. They were so focused on if they could, they never stopped to consider if they should. And NVIDIA tries to get a little less crashy. Tries. Steam opens the floodgates. No, wait. No, 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 no. They, they'd they already done that. And flippity jibba dibba 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 bo uh, Not content with just bringing games to Linux, now he's bringing devices to Linux, or Linux to devices, whatever the case may be. Sounds hot. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual, running the boards, uh, switching this nightmare fuel, joined every week by this sexy beast up north in... Canada, wow. Kanukistan, you know him. Look at him. Wow. That's one Jordan Sving and Space Britannia, who... Uh, Hello. The <laughs> land of the former captors and of questionable bandwidth. But, hey, man, mm-hmm. we always do a show because together with Shadow Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form that last little bit known as Cocaine Voltron. We're going to do a show. We're going to rock your face. We're going to melt it the fuck off. <laughs> Before we get started, we do like to see... Uh, What's going on in each other's life, organs? Uh, Jay, baby, I know you saw the Deadpool. Yeah, I finally, I finally got around to doing that. You can check out my thoughts on that in the pre pre super shows and available only to Patreons. Plugging our shit because oh that's, shit, uh, that's the thing we got to do at some point, several times during the show. Yeah, um, not much else. I've just been hit, hitting the books. Run. <laughs> apparently, being a fucking business owner sucks. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of getting a kick out of it because I, I remember like way back when Jordan did have some sense of like, so you don't do anything the other six days of the week, do you? It's like, yeah. <laughs> Pedro, what's well, that? I mean, you don't. Let's, no. let's, let's be real. Just... No, hell no. Well, and over sal- here. And collecting I, uh... salami, apparently. <laughs> well, there was a lot of that. But over here, I've been actually... Attempting to restore this ThinkPad, and look, it's pretty. It's shiny now. It's got the little dongle for the wireless mouse on the side here. This is brilliant. Yeah. Pedro has spent $200 restoring a $150 laptop. I spent 70 pounds restoring a laptop that I yeah, traded so in for another Yeah, so like $200. Laptop. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, 200 Canadian anyway. <laughs> yeah, $200. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do we got going on? Uh I kind of took a Pepsi challenge. Uh, we spent a little bit of Patreon money uh, on this plain white box. This is what you get when you order a $60, like $70 USB 3.0 um, to HDMI video encoder, which we're using with Pedro to test to uh, watch it catch on fire live Hi. this evening. <laughs> it, it works. I will like do a video thing later on uh, about what it looks like and give some video examples and stuff like that. And... While installing that, I ended up making Tomb Raider work because there was some effery going on with the way the 980 liked having its display ports plugged in and rubbed on. So that was like, it was definitely one of those like, motherfucker, that better not fix this. Like, yeah, that fixed that. Okay. (laughs) Fuck me. Um, True story. So you want to just see what the horse is up to this week? Well, I think we've actually ground up the horse and made it into some fancy, uh, I think it's Norwegian sausage. All right. It's really tasty. It's the Steam Linux. All right. Well, here it is. They're open. The gates are open. There's not even a pretense of doing anything. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, there is. So Valve made a bit of an announcement earlier in the week, and they called it, Who Gets to Be on the Steam Store? And the gist of it is... Everyone, unless it's illegal or they're trolling. Now, uh, we will talk about the trolling bit on the next story, but this one is, uh, yeah, uh, EJ from Valve made a little plo- a little post. Post. Uh, yeah, a plost. post. Uh, a very lengthy post at that, uh, that uh, he tries to explain, it's like, okay, we don't want to do anything. 
because we just want people to curate their own Steam experience themselves. We've all seen how that's worked. Uh, we've been seeing that for the past couple of months. It's not great. And now that, well, they've just dropped a pretense altogether. So now you pay a hundred bucks as the entry and that's it. And, you know, Valve, if you're willing to be the wall that people throw shit at to see what sticks, more power to you, I guess. Uh, if you choose to double down on your hands-off approach, don't be surprised when shit hits, when said shit hits the fan, and, uh, well, you get the uh, really, really stinky side of it. But, on I the mean, other hand, I, part of me kind of likes this idea. I don't know, because, like, you hear a lot of, uh, you hear a lot of stuff from indie developers these days about mm -hmm. how um, they're not really liking Steam as a distribution platform just because, because, because of the open market style thing, all of their hard work and contributions are being lost in the absolute flood of um, submissions. And really, like, I, I read, I read through this entire thing, like, twice, and... I was able to distill it into we can't code our way out of this <laughs> and too many people are complaining whenever we make a decision. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> our only remaining option is to do nothing until someone threatens to call the cops. Yeah. When I read this, my immediate and first reaction was, oh, fuck right off Valve. Seriously, because <laughs> guess what, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, they had a system. Yes, they did. That you could vote games off the island if there were horrible shit shows and shit fest. And it worked not perfectly, but it was an option. You could. There was a small chance that absolute mm -hmm. shit. It was called green light, and you and you kicked it. That's junk, Valve. You did, and you know since then it's just been proven. As uh, both you just said, man, anybody with a few wet stinky caches can get their game on Steam. And what I don't like in that blog post is they kind of come out and they're like, "Listen, this is not an automated system. Humans approve these games." And I laughed. And I laughed. Everyone knows that's a lie, Valve. Come on. This is what I'm saying. Well, man. I mean, listen, if, you, you, uh, can, you can give you can give someone a rubber stamp, right? And they'll. <laughs> that's approved. If, you, if your system's not automated, like you claim, you're just some incompetent motherfuckers. Is all I'm saying, mm -hmm. man. And and I honestly don't get the like we're letting everything in now, bit because you kind of already did. Which brings us to our next story, because they're kind of not now. Yeah. <laughs> Make up your damn mind, Steam. Uh, five games from developer, a bunch of dudes from the uh, <laughs> such five oh, dudes, five dudes get aid simulator, ISIS simulator, suicide simulator, asset flip simulator, which should tell you something, Valve. I mean, that one mm -hmm. I, I agreed with, and triggering simulator. They pulled it down. Um, I kind of, kind of want to give a little bit of credit to Jim fucking Sterling's son. Because uh, that's something I saw in my video feed was, just in all caps, uh, <laughs> Valve endorses aid simulator. And I was like, maybe that got some attention, question mark. But, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I mean let, let's, let's be real. No one's going to miss any, anything in these games. They were, they were put on Steam to either prove a point in the case of Asset Flip Simulator or legitimately just to like poke fun at people in the case of ISIS AIDS and Trigger Simulator. <laughs> Um, and p the, the article, uh, this is from pcgamer.com. The links to all this is in our show notes. Basically, he's on saying, Oh, yeah, well, trolling is so ambiguous, and that's kind of the point, right? Yeah, Valve kind of <laughs> wants carte blanche to say, like, if enough people call and complain, if enough people are emailing, if it creates enough of a PR mess mm -hmm. that it starts to not be worth our time to keep it on the store, then we will do something about it. And that, if you, if you think about it, that's actually really consistent with what valve has been doing for basically everything else. It's their, yep. it's their MO. Yeah, it is. And uh, yes, the trolling clause was a bit vague, but uh, they have a bit of a statement from Doug Lombardi in the article. Mm -hmm. And he says, in addition, the developer uh, that had been involved uh, in numerous misrepresentations, copyright violations, and uh, customer abuses, there are no second chances. And the uh, school shooting simulator game uh, was uh, removed from the store. And to be explicit, while the developer behind it was also a troll, we'd reject Active Shooter if it had been submitted by any no, other developer. No, 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 you not only wouldn't you, you didn't. You didn't. Yeah, that's exactly the well, point. Well, and and and, 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 and that's the thing too. I'm. I'm curious if one of these games gets delisted and you fork out another hundred bucks and it's back on the store, how long will it actually take before someone like takes notice and does something about it? I don't know. They think the 
Val just come out and like, hey, man, now I one one of my hand organs I can definitely look at. OK, I understand. Uh, almost kind of respect because Valve, Valve has no masters. There's a private company. They're like, fuck you. We do what we want. We're yeah. Valve. We don't have investors. And them doing it's like we, we put up whatever we want. I like this. I don't like the kind of wishy-washy bullshit trolling clause because that's just mm-hmm. way too open to interpretation. But Valve does say, hey, man, we're going to put some filters in. So you can, it's your response. Now that I kind of like, you take fucking responsibility. Like, what about my child? I was like, well, be a better fucking parent. A, uh, let's not worry about Valve doing that for you. Mm-hmm. But if you want to filter well, out hey, things hey. like uh, just anime stuff or extra gratuitous bullshit violence, you can. But then again, Valve has said, we're getting around to it. Hashtag Valve time. So we don't know the fuck all yeah. that's going to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like, having some sane default filters by default to, like, filter out all the sexually explicit stuff, you just got to go into your profile and click it. It's probably the ideal solution, ultimately, but, you know, we'll see what Valve actually when comes it's up done. with. When and if yeah. it's done. All right. Uh, so, uh, game updates. Tower of Tower of Tim. Yes, Tower of Tim has a bit of an update, and they've introduced the Pulski localization. I probably mispronounced that but whatever uh there's also other languages in this update uh they have uh entered testing for russian and they'll start work on turkish french simplified chinese spanish and japanese Hmm. but they will not be giving out an eta for that just yet uh they also have some quality of life improvements uh none of those are the ones i particularly wanted to see namely like you know less of a wall of text telling me the story and more, you know, characters acting out the story. Me actually being able to see the story or even better, since this is a video game, an interactive medium at that, playing the story. Hmm? How's that? Uh, (laughs) Hey, man, I wonder if they sorted the performance. We threw the chairs at this. Didn't do so well. Uh, For me, it didn't do so well because first 30 minutes, you're like, okay, this is an ARPG. Then it's like, no, fuck you. It's uh, turn-based. Yeah, I was like, fuck this game. You lied to me. But the performance was absolute shit. It didn't matter if you had Intel, a Ryzen, 980s, 1080s. It just ran like junk. But I don't know. I didn't get a chance to try it out again. Yeah, I mean, my, my, big, my big issue with the game was that I felt the combat system, and it, it wasn't turn-based. It was like a real-time pseudo tower defense wait for hordes of enemy to come enemies to come yeah. and micromanage that shit. That doesn't really tickle my pickle. So... I, I mean, like, they, they included stuff like, oh, well, you can increase the speed of the combat, and we've reduced the reliance of random number generation, and blah, blah, blah. You're, I, I don't know. To me, the core premise of the core gameplay premise is still pretty flawed. And I mean, if you're into it, more power to you. Hey, they fixed some stuff. It's good that they're. I, liked, I do like to see developers who are willing to support their games post release because. That is becoming more and more of a rarity these days, unfortunately, given yeah. like, the amount of this pure stream of shit that gets released on Steam. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, get, you get a thumbs up for that, at least. Indeed. So, uh, Feral, uh, they did a thing. They've released, that's right, Thrones of Fish and Chips, baby. That's right. Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia is out. Currently thirty nine ninety nine. What sneaky caches. Being met with mixed reviews. One thing to, and of note, I guess we should say, is it's using Vulcan? Which yeah, because feral ports nowadays all use Vulcan. Good on them. Uh, hopefully, they will get to you know crow team level Vulcan, where it's actually pretty good. Right now, it's still eh. they're working on it. It's baby I don't, steps. I don't... Uh, one thing I do want to say is, like, on behalf of the Linux gaming community, and by that I mean just us three. Uh, meh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so it's... two 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 points. Um. Num- Number one, I don't think uh, Feral's Vulcan is ever going to get to Crow Team quality because they're using conversion tools, and even even though that stuff is all open source now, it's still you're, there's still a tax to be paid. You get, still got to pay that iron price. Second, I'm certain that there is a market for these sorts of games because they otherwise they would just stop making them, right? But mm-hmm. we are not that market. Okay, and I think so. In, 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 in terms of like turn based grand strategy, um. Linux is kind of packed. It, it's up there with like first person shooters in terms of like games. We don't really need more of. Okay. So a little question here. Uh, is it the market that is that sizable or is it that they've already ported the engine and it doesn't cost them anything? 
Well, I, w- I was more referring to um, not Feral themselves, but the Total War folks whose names I'm spacing on Sega. right now. Uh, uh, creative Assembly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mostly, mostly Sega and yeah. Creative Assembly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, it, it's more that. But yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, it's, it's the same thing with like the Company of Heroes engine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they already have the va- blind share of it ported. They just had to mm-hmm. toss in their new G- graphics back end. And yeah. That's that's really it. They probably got. They were probably able to crap this out in a couple weeks. Well, you're completely right. As far as the total war thing, it's that that thing. If you like Civ or if you like a fishing simulator or something like that, I mean, that's that's your jam. You stick with it and you tell everyone to die in a fire, which is great. I, I respect that. Uh, this one, however, has been met with some mixed reviews because they've kind of nerfed it down to as in quote unquote streamlined the gameplay and as always happens pissed off the core fan base uh yeah <laughs> that's why you see a lot of negative reviews for it uh one thing of note it is disappointing you gotta say this it's mac Linux multiplayer only so only pick this up if you're comfortable playing in forever alone mode yeah, I hate to say it. That, that that's just real. That, that was the thing that's always sort of plagued Feral Ports as well. Their multiplayer is like, oh, well, you can only play Mac versus Mac or Linux versus Linux. Hmm. I guarantee these games would do a lot better if you could actually play them with you know other people. Well, like the last Total War, I just as an experiment just left it idle for almost an hour looking for a game, and it was like, no. Nope, Although to yeah. be fair, like the 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 racing games tend to have actual cross platform multiplayer because we played. Um, yeah, Codemaster. What was it? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, with Josh they're, from they're PC Pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, when we were playing with Josh and he just curb stomped us. Yeah, 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 yeah Grid exactly Auto Sport and. Well, the, then the again, he had a racing had. wheel pedal setup that costs more than the damn render box we're using right now. So <laughs> this this is, again, actually plays racing games. Right. Mm hmm. <laughs> True All right. story. Um, if I if I if I put a drop of water on your hand, it'll it'll go on a different. I don't I don't know. I never got that scene from Jurassic Park. But Chaos theory. Uh, yeah. In 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 true capitalist fashion, um, the, the tie-ins are coming. Jurassic World is coming out. The the new one. And so Rocket League's like, yeah, sure, we'll have the Jurassic car, uh, car Jurassic Park Jeep as a uh, Rocket League car. And uh, so they're they're adding that as a content update. Um, there's some, or rather, a DLC. Uh, they also included a T Rex skull ball explosion, which is mm-hmm. now what I want my new name to be called. Sorry, Doctor Sausage, you're gone. I want I want T Rex ball explosion. That is my new name. He's got a Jeep Wrangler. Oh my god! <laughs> Look, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. see that right there. All of those particle effects and whatnot. I wonder what the performance jack of that is going to be on Linux. If a car explosion is what it is already, imagine that. You know, it's probably going to preload. I mean, the demo bullshit has been there since Genesis. I don't honestly know if it's there on the Windows version. Uh, I don't know anybody running Windows that plays Rocket League. Somebody narc yourself out in the chat. Is uh, I'm digging it. I, I like it. Uh, the hitbox for the Jeeps are based on what is it? Uh, help me out, guys. No, the uh, uh, you, you wrote it Octane. 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 Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, the Octane is the starting car, right? Probably. Yeah, it's the one Something that you use. Like that. <laughs> Listen, I know some people like are haywire about the DLC cars. They're like they have a mile. It's like one thirteenth of a half of a millimeter. Oh, hi, Michael's path. How you doing? <laughs> it's like it's pay to win, and that's all right. Whatever. I don't know. So, so this 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 next story has nothing to do with the porn site of the same name, by the way. No, no. <laughs> It's the free ones, baby. Hey, man, you remember that game we covered a while back? Uh, Pedro did. It was called Valley. Valley. Not only does this look a lot like Valley, it plays mm-hmm. a lot like Valley. Check out our show notes. All that business is going to be there uh, when this goes live uh, on our web zone. There's a link to download the demo and play it. Actually runs pretty decent. I mean, it really does start off like... Uh, it's uh, is, it, is it Unity 5? or? Uh... Uh, it's definitely Unity. Definitely unity. This is going to be available July 12, 2018. The developer says, follow Theo's dizzying adventures in the first person platformer. The free ones. Uh, basically, it's grappling hook the game uh, mm-hmm. with uh, better pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Like, uh, it wasn't Valley that popped in my head when I saw this. It was more like Shadwin, the the game from uh, the Trine folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Shadwin was um, third person. Third person. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and it had that weird babysitting mechanic. But I don't know. Yep. That, that's just what popped into my head. But yeah, Va- Valley is probably the more apt comparison. It does not require a CPU or an operating system. You just need mm-hmm. a uh, four gigajoule mm-hmm. block of RAM and a Radeon HD sixty nine seventy or a seven fifty laying around, and the game will magically. Well, I, I, actually, you don't even need that. If you have a, if you have the elusive six gig uh, dim, then you can just you can just use or that. or you, you know you can they just completely pull it out of the package and start playing directly. It's great, man. No middleman. Yeah. The it. GT seven fifty that doesn't exist. Yeah, but it's a. Uh, the trailer made it look a lot like Valley. It was a bit more, well, it had a bit less production value to it, but it certainly looks a lot like Valley. And when I saw this, like, okay, uh, are these the same developers? Nope. Oh, okay. you did that too. I went and did yeah. some research. I, listen, I apologize to everyone listening. This goes against our code of conduct and ethics here at LGC doing actual research. But I was like, wait a minute. Was it like somebody from the team that did this? Mm-hmm. This, this, is, this is like, it's a very uh, hope, not an imitation, an homage, um, or, yeah. or contemporary. I, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, it's more than four hours. If it's if it's sort yeah, of valuable. yeah, yeah. See, that's the dick move of Valley. You get done with that, and you're like, I give me more, give me some DLC. I was having fun with right. that. Come on, <laughs> or or you know, you know, it'd be kind of interesting opening up Valley to the Steam Workshop, right? Like, here's all the assets. Go make your own shit. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, so but, so I, I need you guys to repeat after me. I am penis. I am no, never mind. Whatever. <laughs> um, this is this, this is Soda Girls. It is a action beat 'em up, kind of in the same sort of vein as the Charlie Murders and whatnot. Uh, they have cute cartoon. Okay, listen, it, it is like 2D sprites on a 3D background, and it just makes my eyes hurt. Yeah, Saturday morning 2D. RPG. Did, did that. you full screen? This is like this is clearly 2.5D. These are 3D models on a 2D plane. Yeah, that, it's still it still hurts my eyes a little bit. <laughs> and it's uh, not. Any, uh, anyways, you know, it's, Saturday morning RPG bad. <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So this, this is a this is an action beat 'em up game, Streets of Rage, Charlie Murder style. Uh, you take on the persona of one of these cute soda girls, and uh, par- apparently um, there's an emphasis on gameplay difficulty. So either things are going to be that, that, that's sort of a fine line to watch uh, walk for indie games because it's either going to be like bullshit fuck you hard or like piss easy once you like oh wait I understand how this combat system works now I'm just going to exploit this thing derp 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 mm-hmm. um, yeah the, the one the one thing I did notice though and it's probably because this guy does not uh, is not a native English speaker but it really does look like the store page was written by Google Translate <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> Uh, I can kind of dig it, man. I mean, it does look like it's a well-done little brawler and take a shot without online multiplayer. Um, you know, uh, speaking what? of online multiplayer, though, oh, um, shit. Uh, origami. Yeah, we, we, we got we got we got one more story in the Steam Linux update of the week. Origami Nightfall. We talked about it previously, but it's out now. You can buy it. It's about 10 bucks. Uh, it adds some more, uh, some new Shadow Ninja powers and a new campaign mode to Aragami. So uh, if you like the first game, get ready for more ninja shenanigans. Shenanigans? Uh, ninjanigans? This, this, I get my That's fingers racist, crossed that neither of them fuck up that enunciation because then hate mail will flow. <laughs> ninja, what? Uh, All right. Uh, <laughs> listen, man, that's their word, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, you know that, that's my bad. I'm, I'm not allowed to say it. O- only only a ninja can sneak up on another ninja. This is DLC. Um, it's eight ninety nine. It's more ninja good, ninja. as they say. It's uh, additional uh, three new shadow techniques, uh, four new chapters, and I didn't mind this game at all. And as Jordan pointed out, it's got online multiplayer support, and it works fairly well. Yeah. It looks good too, especially for you know a small team. Yeah, I, I'm thinking maybe me and Sandy will check this out on a Thursday stream for like a special edition thing. Mm. Canadian I still ninjas. Need to finish the first one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that th- that was one of those things where it was it was fun, but it started getting a little repetitive because uh-huh. it just becomes like okay, waiting. It, it, it kind of does, but I really want to see Poutine Samurai. Yeah, <laughs> mul- 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 <laughs> Poutine Samurai. That's what we're gonna call the series. I like that. Uh, though multi- we did we did test that multiplayer originally, and it does work. Mm-hmm. Uh, it works relatively well, and it actually adds a little bit more dimension of fun to the game because you can send people to bait out the guards and then assassinate them. It's fun stuff. 
Um, all right. I think that's going to cl- uh, close it off for uh, this segment. Coming up next, NVIDIA's feeling a little unstable and PSPPP opens fire on some Klingons. Sexy. It's about that time we started shilling, shilling ourselves, our bodies, our voices, He's our faces. He's touching audio listeners. Yes. Yes, I am. Because I oh so love myself a little bit too much if we're honest but hey you lot make this possible you lot keep uh feeding our egos as it were and uh, i do so very much appreciate it you're awesome so jordan how can more people be awesome well they can donate money to help me pay for my recovery my therapy for (laughs) having this mental image of pedro fisting himself in my head so that that's the thing Thank, thank you for that. Wait, wait ben a minute. You, you, you can pay for therapy to keep images in your head? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's called Scientology. Listen, Anyways, I- you, can, uh, <laughs> you, you, can, you can support this nonsense by heading on over to um, linuxgamecast.com. Click that support button. We got all sorts of stuff uh, that you can click on that's your credit card um, number afterwards none of the which actually goes to the church of scientology thank <laughs> christ uh we got and we got affiliate links uh especially for humble we've apparently raised almost 175 dollars for charity which is kind of insane 172 dollars and 84 cents you guys have yeah. yeah that's pretty good um Never and of course you can head on over to patreon raising money for charity man but yeah here we are new dad yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but of course, if you want to be the coolest of cool kids, you can add it over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Yes. Give us some money there. You get a lot of cool stuff like access to Discord. You get a reserve slot um, when we're uh, streaming some video games. We've been doing that on uh, Tuesdays, uh, fr- Fridays, and Thursdays because fuck chronological order. <laughs> you can even buy your way onto the show if you're so inclined. And we got some people Please who want to think. our uh, time travel habit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> listen, there was an incident with a contraceptive in the time machine. That's how Pedro was born. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you can, uh, uh, we, we gotta, we gotta give some uh, thanks to some awesome people oh, who yeah, are do. throwing money our way. Nine Bullets, Orderly Unicode, which I've been informed is actually Randy Baskey or Gingy mm-hmm. or Chloe or who, who, whatever, whatever she's calling herself. Uh, we, we we appreciate the support. Thank you very much for uh, rejoining the Patreon ranks. And we got, uh, I wanted to call it Birthier, but it's Bithier, who's uh, the newest Patreon. Thanks a whole bunch. We're getting kind of close to um, a point where we're going to have to make some T-shirts. And I think Ven had some ideas about we're, that. We're definitely coming up on that. But yeah, Nine Bullets, Order of the Unicode, and Bithier. I don't know, man. Bithier. It, it sounds Vikingish, doesn't it? It sounds mm-hmm. like something yeah. Thor's going to pull out of his pocket. He's like, this is Bithier. <laughs> this is Bithier. He's like, <laughs> yeah, this is my backup meal near Bithier. It's a cock ring, dude. Put it back in your... No. <laughs> so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting close to uh, doing some t-shirts, baby. That's coming up. That is a merch run. And, man, we have created some awesome ones. Uh, I might post a couple of them. Go back and watch uh, Friday Night Food Bar if you want to check that business out. I mean, we're probably only going to do that like once a month to get ideas and stuff like that. It's just a fun trivia game that has turned out things like Hijack Box I'm Dad, which collectively cost us all <laughs> to lose our shit if you're familiar with uh turbo mum and uh crack is whack brilliant ones uh, mr alert's been archiving those for us so thanks for that uh let's see what do we got up oh yeah uh fuckery blatant fuckery because we're doing a new thing it's uh not called a uh, project because we can't afford a thread ripper system it's called project bifrost where we're going to try to do things right. And uh, as much as you like seeing things catch on fire, we're going to try to minimize that in the hopes of we'll ever get around to that ongoing carrot that we like to dangle in front of ourselves of being able to bring on guests and other people and all the fun stuff and have a very stable, pretty system that, which would be even more terrifying, uh, in 1080p, 60? Mm, UHD we're 60. We're going to need new cameras. <laughs> well, maybe. Boom. Look at that shit. There it is. I made a diagram because Vins make diagrams. Straight from <laughs> MS Paint to your eyes. Oh man, I gimp that man. Uh, that that's our current plan right there. That is is because it's doable now. It's doable. All right. If the thing that Pedro's on right now doesn't actually catch on fire and run screeching out of my house this evening, <laughs> being able to do a proper per person setup just got cheap because before that we were looking at black magics. 
And those things are going to run us like 250 bucks, 70 fucking dollars. And so thanks to everyone who is donating hardware uh, through the Amazons and especially to our Patreons because you guys keep us funded for that. And everything else we will continue doing. Uh, we got anything else in... I don't think mm, so. That shill, shill, yeah. Shilling ends now. Oh. Unless Pedro wants to take off a shirt. Sorry, Penguin. Hey, shirt, look, uh, shilling is over, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's let's start let's start off the regular news section. We we got we got a not so long one this week. Um, you know, we haven't talked about NVIDIA drivers in a while, so here mm-hmm. you go. Here's some NVIDIA drivers. 39067 is the latest NVIDIA stable branch. Um, there are a number of crash fixes in there, and hey. Would you look at that? There's a wine fix in there. Yeah, it's always, it's always fun to see those uh, creep, creep out because say, say what you will about NVIDIA's open source track record. They do fix their damn bugs if you submit yeah. reports. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's always good to see that, especially because wine does weird stuff with OpenGL. Uh, it really pushes the driver to its limits. It's the same sort of thing with like um, Dolphin or RPCS3, where like they're doing crazy shit, like implementing GPUs and GPUs in graphics languages. So it really pushes what the drivers and the hardware even is even capable of doing. So that's all cool. You can check that out if you haven't been following the beta. Um, which I mean, I don't blame you because the last couple NVIDIA beta releases have not been great. Mm-hmm. No, no, they haven't. Uh, they've been FGLRX level, AMD FGLRX level uh, releases. And it would be nice. It would be nice to get a proper NVIDIA driver soon rather than later. Hey, man, uh, I'm glad they're rolling it out. There's some updates for DisplayPort, which it's NVIDIA. Crapshoot, man. Uh I still can't say 100% of the time this uh, monitor will come out of hibernation with any regularity. <laughs> so that's the, the 4K? A, yeah. Uh, the that's Acer- been fixed for me for like a year now. Dude, it was fixed a couple of releases back, like 100%. And now it could be, I have had it happen like twice in the last maybe month or two. You know, you know what I haven't had that's probably going to happen like midway through the segment mm. is the freaking alarm going off. Man, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, fuck, we're doing one of those, aren't we? Um, <laughs> we're doing like three of them at geez, this point, man. heart attack inducing bullshit. Thanks, Acer. All right. Coming up next, man, speculate. Yeah, speculation. So uh, the Vulcan, this one comes from the AMD Reddit. That's the place where you go if you want some really, really accurate information. Hey, man, they're not biased. Uh, they're, they're, they're fair and balanced. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they say that Vulcan in Unreal Engine 420 plays it. Woo, 420 is huge. Thirty uh, percent plus gains for AMD over the X uh, over the the X11 renderer. Slides from GDC 2018, and uh, there's a link there. You can click through it. You can have a look through the slides, and well, it's uh, you know. Uh, Vulcan having better performance than DX11 in other shocking news. Sky reportedly still blue, water reportedly still wet, and hey, wouldn't you know it? Bears shit in the woods. Uh, but yeah. it's yeah, it's it's good. I think. Yeah, and and to your point in the show notes, uh, Pedro. Um, yeah, these are these are all this is all done on Windows, right? So. Mm-hmm. What, what, what this actually means for Linux is impossible to say because we don't have the data, we don't have a comparable system that we can test, and no one actually wants to install Windows to run those tests. Let's be real. And I don't blame you for doing that. Um, but, you know, it, basically what this would translate to under Linux is pure speculation, but because this is Linux, fuck mother and Gamecast, speculation is our bread and mayonnaise. Hi, ladies, um, gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> old Ben speculating stone. Um... Here, yeah. Here's what I think, lads, is you know, this does at least get Vulcan more in front of developers using Unreal Engine 4. I mean, it does, especially those wanting mm-hmm. to make up the performance delta between AMD and NVIDIA. Like, hey, here's or, this magic Or targeting sauce. mobile. Mobile, mm-hmm. too. Uh, they they want to do that. And if they can, and it's not terrible, and it's there, like, okay, they're going to look at it. So then later on, down the road, the game comes out. It already supports Vulcan because DX12 is the future, bro. Then we can go. 
Be like, yeah, what? It's like, so you got a Vulcan render? Yeah, it's on Unreal. Hit export. Send me a copy. Let's do some work on that. It's trickle down rendernomics, ladies and gentlemen. That's, <laughs> oh, that's God. I think you just gave me cancer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, this is nothing but good. So, it's got a thing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, speaking of Vulcan, um, PS PPSSPP. Pew pew. It's, uh, the, it, it's basically that thing you tell your child to say instead of referring to their genitals <laughs> and, as their and actual the names. Child goes, parent, are you having a stroke? <laughs> Yeah, uh, as, as of May 26, uh, there was a new update uh, pushed out, 1.6, a.k.a. the fast one. <laughs> they, uh, Vulkan is now primetime on uh, SDL builds, uh, which means that uh, Linux and Android are getting uh, the full Vulkan treatment. Uh, as a first-class citizen, uh, the OpenGL implementation has now been properly multi-threaded, so there should be some performance games there. And not too much on the Control-F Linux side, but at least in the mobile front, it looks like uh, they've been working with a better ARC64 um, assembly uh, JIT compiler. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they've they've been able to squeeze some performance improvements out of that as well, especially on mobile, which is good to see because in a couple of years when, you know, everyone's cribbing off the Apple ARM laptops and people will actually want to try and run games on them, this will, this so work will already have been with, there. Uh, with it says PlayStation Portable. What all exactly does this emulate? Does it just do the PSP? Does it do the Vita? Or it, it does the PSP, PSP which that's and, it. That's and honestly, it there were like a lot of there were like a lot of good games on the PSP. Just no one ended up buying the console. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I was one of those uh, people who bought a PSP. I had the original one, the fat one, and it uh, the moment that Sony released the end user license upgrade uh, update to say that no you don't own your hardware even though you paid for it well i put some custom firmware on it and it became my um emulator machine but there were a couple of very good games on it uh final fantasy 7 crisis core comes to mind uh dungeon siege the uh action rpg type of thing that they released for that that was also pretty good uh it's, the remake of Final Fantasy Tactics was solid. Yeah, that was pretty good too. Uh, and this one, well, you get to play all of those games in 4K if you have the monitor to display it with pretty good performance because it shader caches everything now, which is awesome. Pretty good. Good mm -hmm, to yeah. see. Uh, up next, coming to Linux, Paradox Interactive at the story because, you know, they got their own door. You know, you can link your Paradox mm -hmm. and Steam accounts together. And according to them, get access to select games directly through Paradox. Already bought a Battletech, Surviving Mars, Stellaris, Tyranny. In the Paradox store, download our new launcher and play. So it's new to that. The reason we're bringing it up is there's a little button down here that says, uh, Coming soon for Linux. Ah, Ooh. isn't Ooh. that a little bit interesting, which I say, yes, I think it is. <laughs> Uh, will this come before Carmageddon reincarnation? No, no. Well, yes, yes. yes. I don't, listen, no. man, Carmageddon I, reincarnation is never coming. Yeah, I, I would have <laughs> said God Galaxy, but I just thought that was way too unrealistic. Uh, welcome to a brave new world, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to see a lot more of this. I mean, basically any studio, every studio with a few games under their belt, they're going to be testing steam free waters. Like, mm -hmm. seeing what they can get away with. And with the shite-tastic way Steam's been acting as of late, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't really blame them. They're like, mm, maybe you, I don't want to give that 40% cut. I'm not getting a good value in turn. But Jordan, you've said a lot of uh, engine developers going over to Itch, man. They're like, yeah, it's just uh, they don't want to deal with the hassle. Or, or just or just looking for Steam alternatives, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're, get, you're going to get a better return on the Play Store. You're going to get a better return on the uh, iTunes Store, on the fucking the Switch, Switch Store, where everything yeah. is $30 up and up. So you're guaranteed to not make peanuts. Um, yeah, and to be fair, Paradox, like, the, the games they have featured, aside from Battletech, are all on Linux. Mm -hmm. They've been pretty mm -hmm. good about the Linux support. So I don't think this is too much of a pipe dream. I think it's fairly low on the totem pole, or the priority totem pole anyways. But at the same time, they already have most of the work done, at least in terms of getting the games moved over. So, hmm. And uh, this is what happens when the Monopoly is no, uh, is no longer the best uh, choice. 
if you are a an indie developer and you want people to be able to see your game because you're competing with shit on Steam. Oh god. So <laughs> I just realized Valve is turning into Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Valve's just a good example of like when you're not hungry. You're like, man, uh-huh. they got a machine that and prints money. What the like, fuck? What, what kind of at this point, want, huh? exactly because of that, at this point, it wouldn't hurt the if Steam got a little bit of a competition. And if GOG doesn't step up because they haven't, and let's mm-hmm. be honest, they won't anytime soon. Well, Paradox has a big enough Linux library to make it worth considering. Somebody you got to look out for, like the Dark Horse, is going to be Humble. I can see Humble sticking something together. Humble could do it, But, yeah. Jordan, aren't you kind of worried about this is turning into the South Park Walmart episode? There'll be some smaller company that does it, and it's going to get bigger, and it's going to turn into another Steam. Then we have to burn it. I was like, well, let's not do that again. Well, I mean, I mean, what you're describing is a core problem with capitalism. So until we get rid of that, I think we're going to be stuck with. Well, this. it's better than communism, which has never worked in any place that's ever been attempted. So, well, that's, that's, that's neither that. here nor that's but, neither here nor there. No, that's just the Anyways. truth. Uh, new games coming. New games have been added to GOG Connect. Uh, yeah, man, uh, Jordan, what'd you get? I got uh, I got FTL Psychonauts Jotun and. Uh, I thought I thought I already got a machine for pigs, but I guess not. Yeah, there's a couple um, things. I got uh, Jotun Grimlock. Uh, one thing I did notice. Now this was a bit confusing. If you know what God Connect is, head over there. It's just good old games forward slash connect. You can link your Steam account, and anything that is in the Connect offers, you'll be able to download and have your own copy of. That's the thing. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, but I did have to. Well, it bitched about. It's like your Steam profile is not public, and I was like, "What? Oh, right, Steam did the privacy <laughs> thing a while ago." And I was like, "Did didn't I change that?" So I made my games public again. Sorry, anyone who wanted to creep on me, now you can. But <laughs> by the time I had went and did that, I refreshed the page, and it's like, "Yeah, but I've added you games anyway. Fuck you." Um, <laughs> <laughs> true fucking story. Yeah, I mean, and again, it's nice to have a DRM-free copy if you want to like seed your games to torrent sites because you know Linux piracy is a huge problem. Oh, yes, man. dozen, yeah, dozen yeah. of Linux users. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's it's more games, and if you want to have uh, like a linux version that's not tied to steam because you don't want to install steam because of raisins mm-hmm. uh then yeah just download the gog installer back it up to an external hard drive and bob's your uncle nah. i do i i have noticed though that a bunch of these games are uh that that are available through connect are the ones that you can just kind of copy your out of your steam directory and they'll still work yeah, yeah. ones without DR- yeah. if you don't know ladies and gentlemen i ate a lot of indie titles on steam no drm on it you can just yeah put it over um yeah star seeds hot yeah so so um this is one of those things where um a, a lot of people wanted to um have a specific type of game they got together they wrote an engine they started doing development and then they realized that you know making a game an engine from scratch is a lot of work mm-hmm. and uh and you know, a lot, with, as is the case with a lot of volunteer projects, people have work, people have school, people have shit in their lives, and they can't devote time and effort to their project. And so, what some of them do, and what we appreciate them doing, is open sourcing it. And uh, mm-hmm. the Seeds of Andromeda uh, game and the corresponding Vorb engine have all been released under the MIT Open Source License. So uh, you can start, uh, if you're interested in uh, checking that out, you can hack away at that. I was reading through uh, their thing, and it's it's all it's all done in OpenGL. It's all, like, cross-compatible, theoretically. Uh, compiling on Linux apparently was done some time ago, and Is things thing may or may not have changed based? since then. Uh, yeah, it's a voxel-based yeah. open world, sort of Planet explorers y like. Okay. But it has 100% think, less Kevin yeah, no Sorbo Man's than Sky meets Minecraft. <laughs> well, no, the, you don't. You don't go to other planets in this. You're on one planet. Hmm. All right. Hence, <laughs> All planet right. explorers. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that's you know, you know, you know maybe, maybe maybe reading the story before making claims helps. Uh, yeah. So uh, things it. may have changed read about the game. <laughs> That's the thing, man. It's yeah. good to see stuff like this uh, rather than dying. I mean, it can live forth by just opening yeah. code. Yeah. If people want to do yeah. something with it, they will. Uh, Flippity jibbity ibbity bidi bo is back with a little update. 
Oh, yes. A uh, little, which uh, is actually a pretty big wall of text that he posted on Google Plus earlier. So uh, he got himself a GPD Win 2. Uh, if you don't know GPD, they're the ones behind the pocket. They had a more gaming oriented machine in the past that was called the GPD Win. And recently they had the uh, Indiegogo or Kickstarter for the GPD Win 2, which people were kind of curious. So, how does Linux run on it? And well, uh, Flibbit got one, and he said, Flibbit, you know, "I love you, buddy. You're full of lies. Wait, hang on. No, my Unity didn't. I thought Unity would actually work on a touch unifi- uniface. Uh, until I try this yes. in, in, in your face. <laughs> Apparently, the Unity desktop, sorry, canonical, didn't work fucking anywhere, man. All right, no, but uh, yeah, this, that just leaves more uh, credence to my argument that cr- uh, GNOME." Three was very much designed with a touchscreen in mind, uh, even if Stradel will disagree. But uh, Ethan, since the GPD Win 2 has a touchscreen and it has the game controller as well as the keyboard, he was, you know, maybe this is going to be hard to get it to work. Now, it was like two lines of code to get the uh, game controller bits working and one line of code to get the touchscreen working. Uh, as he put it, three lines of copy paste code. So, yeah. Uh, he submitted those to the kernel. Uh, they will be merged at some point in the n- very near future. And out of the box experience on Linux for the GPD Win 2 looks uh, looks like a pretty reasonable thing to expect. I gotta say, the only problem uh, we talked about this on the Wednesday show, right? And yeah, uh, uh, no, this uh, we talked about the uh, GPD Pocket 2. Which was the slim one? Oh, Pocket 2. Right? This is the what, one. What, what was the what was the crowdfunded open source one that was? Oh, I'm, I'm spacing on it. It was um, the strangest flashlight. Um, <laughs> it was a, a no, it, it was it was essentially this, but it would only play like open source games. Mm. I'm oh, uh, blanking the on Pandora. The Pandora. Yeah, the Pandora. Okay. There you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, so th- th- this sort of seems like a like a beefier one of these, sort of in that sort of idealistic like pipe dream smock zero realm. Well, yeah. I mean, this this is except actual, this one actually exists. You're right. It has that going for it. And I, I like the device. It's neat. I couldn't get over the sticker shock. I was like, whoa, all right. That's a bit pricey, but, you know, this boutique size stuff is because, I mean, it's 100% something that I would have a blast playing with an afternoon and I'd never touch the damn thing again. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Get us fuck out of here, baby, since you're about to fall bed. All right. Coming up next. I'm going to fall out of bed, man. I'm not even awake right now. What? <laughs> no, we're uh, I'm trapped. We're we're trapped in a computer. We're we're trapped in an operating Your system. And we got to visual our way. Yeah, out. we're throwing we're throwing chairs that visual out. We're trying some new chair acquisition shit too. So if you want to see that catch fire, stay tuned. I think it's appropriate that we're. Essentially, testing a new version of the chair acquisition. This is this is going to be the chair evolution, the chair bait acquisition. Hot mess. Um, well, well, yeah, the, the hot bullshit, more like we're, we're we're beyond mess. This is like some awful analogy about rolling around in feces. Uh, we're we're going to be throwing some new chairs. This is hot new chairs at Visual Out, a game that is about a broken process uh, that is trying to escape from its bonds. Um, this is, it's developed by Madame Berry Games. It's on the Construct 2 engine. You can pick it up for around 10 of your local currency, unless you're in the UK, in which case you're picking it up for seven pounds. What is it? A, as a program defying your operating system's wishes, so System D, plunge into the depths <laughs> of a dying computer and augment yourself with data scrambling abilities like jammer, current turret, and more. Uncover the secrets behind the computer and its creator's demise. So this is basically the dark ending for um, reboot. Anyways, uh, the dev sent us some keys for this. So we're the new the new chair QA edition works as follows. We break things down into two sections: the the does it work, the facts, the the hard numbers versus the feels. Right? Is right. it fun? Mm-hmm. Did, did, did we did we enjoy playing it? Is it visually appealing for us? So let's kick this off with the the facts section, which we start with: does it work? Hmm. It now, did on Fedora 28. I was about to say, we, we have these colorful little logos. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, the 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 audio listeners don't necessarily see that because they don't suffer from synesthesia. But so what? You're you're on Ubuntu 1804 mm-hmm. now. 1804. LTS. I'm on Fedora 28, mm-hmm. and I don't know what Solus's versioning is. It's whatever Ike feels like it is uh, this morning. Pretty much. Yeah. Right now it's 3.99999. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even when it does end sense. All right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, when you launch the game from Steam, I mean, like it pops up it works it's a tiny little window um it, it, it's small mm-hmm. but it works it works mm-hmm. i don't think it, any of us had an issue with the launching that that's not even that nope. should be a me- i mean it is a metric but we just want to let you know it run, runs on all three yeah. but then we're going to rock right into performance man and pedro well let's just run down this we'll, we'll run an order for this one because we don't know what we're doing just yet on this new one yeah it is uh on my box i didn't get time to do the graphic overlays if you know ryzen 7 with a 980 1804 all that business this is 2d pixels doesn't work with steam overlay uh that was new uh something i hadn't seen in a long time basically this is you're playing a web page if you can load facebook i think you can play this game right yep yeah just don't just don't play it on your raspberry pi right like not with the, with the <laughs> i mean the t- let's be real the 1080 ti is significant <laughs> overkill for what this game is i would be shocked and or appalled if this performed worse than i don't know 80 FPS at 1080p. Right. Uh, that's uh, that's going to be coming up. But yeah, you can't really get a, a uh, FURPS readout, but it runs well enough. But it's the Construct 2 engine. It's an HTML5 engine. So yeah, if you can run a browser, chances are you can run this game. Mm-hmm. Good to know. What's All right. Uh, yeah. Graphical fuckery. So like, is there any artifacting? Is there black screen missing textures? Just general ugliness that can be fixed from a technical standpoint. Um, no, nope. Clean. No, hole. I think the only ones that are visible are the ones that were intended because that's the kind of game we're playing. Yeah. What was that yeah. game that did such an awesome job of like simulating a failing graphics card? I forget the name. Oh, uh, uh, over. Um, what was it? Observer. Observer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't miss that. This, this yeah, one. Observer made me genuinely fear for the health of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> this does not do that. Um, controls, I mean, I, I, I don't know, Ben. I think you had the, the biggest set of issues here. So let's uh, yeah, I'm the take. only one going to be throwing an X on this. This is, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, go check out the show notes for this. Uh, and we want some suggestions. Uh, for me, this is a hot damn mess because I used it. Uh, thanks, Strider. You're so cute. Uh, with the Areola controller, the Steam controller. And it's a hot damn mess, as I said. If you try to re- in- input, try to rebind it. It's got an option for it. It's like, oh, kudos. It starts inputting keyboard commands. From the Steam controller. I was like, oh, fuck. All right, we're going to have to go play with this in a minute. So I just, you know, kind of button mashed to get out of the menu because it made you go through each one, right? Mm -hmm. I did Mm -hmm. that. It's like, that's your new settings, bro. Figure out what you just fucking mashed. So we're talking like a button was up and shit like this. (laughs) I had to decrypt that to figure out how to get back in the menu because I I, I was like, I don't even want to touch that. I'm going to go find the controller config where that file is stored and just wipe it. Couldn't find it. Didn't exist. Uh, I did sort it, but yeah, you just, there's nothing with the Steam controller you can rebind it to that it's just like random bullshit on a keyboard. Uh, so yeah, non rebindable controls for, for me. 2018. Uh uh-uh. uh. Sorry. See, I, so I, I, I was playing this with the um, DualShock, mm-hmm. uh, DualShock Four, and some games have an issue with like the Steam input control DualShock. They think that it's an Xbox controller and make some decisions based on it that do not work. This is one of those games. Um, fortunately, I was able to remap the controls. I ran into something similar where I mashed something a little too fast and then I had to go through the entire key select. I was lucky enough to remember what I selected for A and up. Mm. So I was able to set the controls to something relatively proper and then everything just kind of worked for me. So it requires a little bit of work, uh, but I imagine if you're just using like a vanilla Xbox controller, uh, you would have fewer issues, question mark. I actually, I guess I had one. I probably should have tested it, but I did not. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fault it for anything. It, uh, af- after that, everything is pretty much journer as I wrote in the show notes because I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't need to rebind anything because the eight bit do controller in, uh, X input mode just worked out of the box. The reason that this game doesn't work with the steam controller it, and it doesn't work if you have your uh, DualShock 4 set to use Steam input. It's because it doesn't use the overlay. 
It doesn't use the overlay. It doesn't use the Steam controller input thing. It just doesn't. So it's whatever your operating system is seeing your controller as is what this game will pick up on it. And if you just start the Steam controller and it doesn't see that a game has started, like, say, an HTML5 game running in what is basically a glorified browser window, well, then it's just going to use the desktop uh, mappings, which is what Ven was seeing. Yeah, yeah, on my end, though, it just worked. So, you know, I'm going to say in my defense, if you're selling a game on Steam, it probably should work with a Steam controller. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you, you'd you think so. Anyways, we got one last section, the fuckery fuckery, as we <laughs> call it, because we're so eloquent. We're, we're classy ladies, us, Pedro, Ven, and myself. Um... Yeah, was there any other weird stuff like hard locks, uh, just stuff that don't fall into the other categories? This oh, is kind of like yeah. a catch-all bin. Yeah, the, the, this is was like, wait a minute, this is a fucking web game. Hit F12 to take a screenshot. I was going to share it on the Twitters. I was like, hey, this game, I don't know if I like it or really hate it the way it looks. Uh, yeah, that brings up the uh, Chrome Development Tools console. It's like... <laughs> Well, then, that's a new one in my history of hundreds and hundreds of games I've played on Steam. I was like, all right. Uh, it didn't, didn't affect anything, though, so uh, clean the well. Yeah, I, I I had no issues at all. I didn't. I, I saw the Chrome dev tool. I was like, oh, it's a browser game. It's an Electron Wrap job. I guess it makes sense. Uh, Pedro? Yeah, I had an issue that the game doesn't save the progress when you shut it down. Why? Because, well, the developer doesn't know how to non-English locale. Uh, the moment I added uh, uh, LC underscore all equals C uh, percentage command percentage to the Steam launch options, oh, look, now the, uh, the game saves actually stay preserved when I kill the game and bring it back up. Oh, would you look at that? So that's a big rad X for me. <laughs> All right. So uh, we, we had four categories here. Um, so I guess uh, on a per operating system basis, we're going to give it a score. Um, on Fedora, everything worked fine. I mean, there was the minor thing with the controllers, but that took about a minute to sort. So I'm going to give it four chairs for the does it work section. Then... Or Pedro. Pedro's up next. Yeah, uh, for me in Solus, it was just the fact that the game, because I have my system set to Portuguese, it did not record the progress uh, if I quit and came back. So three for me. And on Kombu too, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to make a lot more sense for uh, not many people watch the video version, but we'll have some overlay graphics next week. Uh, I'm going to say three because we have four four points you can earn or four points you can lose. And for me, this failed on controls. So three on Ubuntu 1804 LTS. Now, everyone's favorite thing is the subjective part where you're like, but I liked it and you didn't. You're wrong on the Internet. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this is the, the fun segment. Uh, I, I don't know who, who wants to go first. I guess I'll go first, man. Uh, again, we, we got this. What do we hate about the game and what do we hate least about the game? Or hate less about the mm -hmm. game. Again, we're still spitballing these segments. Uh, it forced me to play with the keyboard. I didn't like that. I can't platform anymore using a keyboard. My brain organ is no longer wired for that business. Didn't work. Couldn't find a quick way to access the map. That was irritating as fuck. Uh, a lot of fake walls lead to nothing. I'm guessing there's some shit you get later on that will sort that business. I And like the big killer, I just feel like. This would have been a better game, but it's been severely limited by the Construct 2 engine being just an HTML5 game. Jordan? Yeah, so this game, my, my issue comes with like how the game is actually designed, because the game doesn't actually give you all that much to work with. You can make the argument that like a lot of old Metroidvania-style games like Super Metroid or, Cast or like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, that sort of stuff, didn't really give you a lot of directions. Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest was particularly egregious for that. But here's the thing. And it's even Castle, even Simon's Quest in its own special way attempted to guide you. It gave you information. It had a straightforward system for interacting with the world. Here, it basically, for, the, for a large portion of the first part of the game, it basically boils down to find a glowy ball thing, drag it along with you, um, and sometimes that will drag it into the path 
where you're walking, which will mm -hmm. and remember these balls will kill you as well. They kill everything. So you will you will take damage. You, you saw Pedro doing it if you're watching the uh, video thing. The, the, this is a, this is a recurring thing. Um, drag it to you somewhere where your enemies will cross their path. And then that's you, you. You succeed, and as you progress in the game, there are other things that you can do. You gain the ability to like invert things and drag things and so on and double jump. But again, they don't really explain this in any sort of meaningful way. They sort of leave it for you to figure out, and that was frustrating for me. Um, there's, uh, I don't know if Pedro's going to get to the the first boss in this uh, in this recorded segment. Yes, I am. But Twice. Decide. <laughs> deciphering what you're supposed to do in that boss fight is a whole other thing. And I get it. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that because it's a unique way of doing it, but I feel it needs a refinement and I'll talk about it more in the stuff I like segment. It's it's the, the way you interact with the world seems very esoteric and not straightforward and would have benefited from maybe some explanation. And I think that's like the biggest weakness of this game. Pedro. Well, uh, the biggest thing that I hated, and I genuinely did hate it, was the fact that I couldn't save the progress until I figured out, oh, it's just another game that can figure out a non-English locale. Um, so I guess you could... living in the place where English was created, but he's like, no. Yeah, 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 but I am Portuguese. He's, 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 he's a bucket guy gene, stupid foreigner, right? Yep. I, I grew up uh, with an operating system in Portuguese, and I like to have my Linux installs in Portuguese. Well, at least it's Brazilian Portuguese, the real one. No, 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 yeah. no. It's uh, actual Portuguese. In any case, uh, the... Yeah, Brazilian uh, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. I guess you could finish this game in one sitting, uh, because the hour I played was uh, enough for me to get like 35% of the way through, according to the save that I got. I was reading in the forums, and one guy's like, I'm thinking about speedrunning it. I mean, straightforward right now, it takes me about six hours to get through it. Okay. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, 30 about a third of the way through in an hour. I guess if you could try, if you could, um, uh speed run it it'll probably take you about three hours but whatever the case may be the graphics were kind of meh and it was kind of disappointing but yeah no i'm not going to sit for three hours with this game if it's not going to save my progress so yeah <laughs> even though it totally does uh <laughs> anyways um next section is what we hated the least or at least what what tickled us in this game. So then you want to you want to take this honey child. You know what? I dig the look minimalistic. Uh, it's all right. I, I, I can excuse that. I mean, it, it it it's cohesive. It sticks together. Same thing for the soundtrack. It fits what you're seeing um, really has an Axiom Verge like on a budget vibe. Axiom Verge. Great game. Go pick it up. But it never goes on sale. And what it does is like 2%, 20 bucks. Uh, it's got that vibe to it. Not a bad thing. Tons of bullshit to explore. It has that going for it. But a lot of that exploration is like, man, because it's too much of a pain in the ass to get to the map. Uh, it's not horrid for something that came out of a game jam, because this did. But I mean, even those positive things together, man, you know, I, I just don't feel that this uh, justifies a nine ninety nine price tag. It's, it's not a finished product. And, you know, there's no achievements. Steam controller doesn't work. And... Yeah, I mean, if this was, I don't know, like three bucks or something like that, possibly. But yeah, that's that's what I hated least about it. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of torn when it comes to the visual uh, aesthetic. Sometimes it um, it feels like genuinely inspired in what they're trying to do, and other times it's just like this is lazy. That's just a mosquito. Why am I fighting mosquitoes that shoot <laughs> that shoot little poops? And why can't I walk through the poops? True, and some I've stuff is like. Like straight up Metroid, like some of the doors, man. I'm like, really? Yeah, and and like the, that boss was like kind of neat, right? It was it was something yeah. different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but 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 again, like it, it's that sort of inconsistency that really really I feel harms the game. But there's there's like this 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 part right here. Uh, if watching the audio, well, I don't, I don't <laughs> I know. There's some, there's some time stamp here. Time. Actually, I'm watching audio <laughs> right now. Trust me. I am. Or if you're if you're. Forms. What, 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 whatever it doesn't it doesn't fucking matter you get what i'm saying <laughs> this kind of stuff is really cool but the rest of the game doesn't sort of lacks that um and 
like like I said, it's esoteric, but once you sort of wrap your brain around how you interact with the environment, it gets a little better, and you can sort of start exploring the map more. Um, and it it really does make sense that this sort of thing came out of a game jam. It's the sort of experimental gameplay that um, these things are kind of known for fostering and incubating. Uh, it's but it's a it's a it's, it's a really hard needle to thread uh, because if it it becomes if it becomes inaccessible, then you just get frustrated people who aren't playing your game and not enjoying it, and that's kind of the point of making a game. But all in all, this it isn't horrible. I don't I don't hate this game. There's definitely redeeming stuff, but there's also there's there's some problems here, Brad, and they need to be addressed. And I'm not sure any of them are like core to the game's DNA. So I think maybe at some point this could become something actually genuinely good. It could. And I do like Metroidvanias. I like Metroidvanias a lot, especially if they lead more on the Vania side of that particular moniker. And this one very much fits the bill. I really like the atmosphere. When I first started the game and the music started playing, it's like, oh, ooh. This could be something I very much enjoy. Uh, the music really helps, w- and the random background noise of computery bleeps, bloops, and the whole our hard drive spinning up, uh, that really adds to that atmosphere. Honestly, I wouldn't have an issue recommending it if I'd only been able to save progress from the get-go and not have to resort to finicky workarounds to change the locale to a generic one that Peter, the game will recognize. You just good. Uh, yeah. Oh, here, 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 here's here's the thing: not being able to see your health is really I was annoying. About to bring that shit up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like you, after a certain point, things get all like buzzy and weird. Mm-hmm. But like, I have no idea when that's going to happen in relation to anything else, and it's annoying. Well, you got a good idea, all, but you also don't know what you can get away with. And that's a very it, important it, ex- thing. exactly. Yeah. yeah, because because mm-hmm. a, a lot a lot of the stuff, like the way you interact with the with the freaking game, is you. <laughs> You fucking, you fucking straight up, like have to. You you will hurt yourself trying to move things to solve puzzles because you can't help it. Well, this is true, man. It's the, very childlike in the aspect of like. There's a lot of exploration just in the. Uh, hey, does this thing burn me? Uh, all right, that one burns mm-hmm. me. Okay, what about this thing? You got to go touch it and fuck with it. And it's like, yep, all right, that hurts. And sometimes that will get you noped. And yep. back to your save point. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, um, I think that about wraps it up. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's, let's give, let's give it a fun score. Cause we have, we have the technical side of things. What about the, what about the fun side of things? Ven, what, what, what would you give it? I'm going to give this one chair. Old rules apply. Yeah. Don't, don't bother with this one, man. It, an attempt was made is what I can say. I'd give it two. There's, like I said, there's good stuff in here, but there's also a lot of crap that needs, that could benefit from refinement or just a little more time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I too would give it two, but mostly because of the same reasons, and it had all the makings of a proper, if you the, know, the, basic the, this fucking situation video. right here, where you got to yeah. jump with the balls in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> yeah, it had a lot of potential, but it did not come to pass. So two chairs, I think, is a fair score. All right. All right. Well, that uh, closes us up for the new and not so improved chair QA edition. If uh, you like this format, send us some hate mail. If you don't like this format, also send us some hate mail, which we will read some next. Sweet. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all y'all's people around the world listening to us right now, it's the end of the show. Yeah, you've waited for we it. If you've made it this far, I'm impressed. I genuinely am. So if you'd like to maybe point out some inaccuracies, some things we got wrong, some suggestions you'd like to make over that uh, little bit of a beta chair qa edition, what we had just now, you can do that by going to linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. Make sure LGC Weekly is the thing that you pick. Or if you'd like to, you know, send the skis, ask Jordan for relationship mm. advice, it, there's also the adequate category for that. Although if you are sending us keys, make sure to send, at the very least, three of them. Okay. All right. So we actually have a little bit of hate mail this week. Uh, first up is the Honest Dolus. And he says, Sakura Dungeon and the first two Sunrider titles are also games, quote unquote. Um, so this is about... Uh 
the steam titties steam uh, apocalypse to tie, thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he says that uh, some of those games um, that were taken down uh, because Cog actually put them up. So he says, hell, I think the first Sun Rider is a Stallman friendly under the GPL slash CC by whatever. And the two fate visual novels that just got put on Gog are not pornographic at all. Well, yeah. Yeah, regardless, there is someone out there masturbating to them, but that could be of said about there literally is. anything. <laughs> you, is you, it on you, the internet? You could Someone's even, jerking off to it. You could even say that about Pedro. Though, to be fair, it's probably just Pedro, but that's... That just goes. I'm a bit of a narcissist. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, go go touch your totem. Wait, don't touch your totem, Pedro. Bad Pedro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this does come down. I mean, hey man, this is exactly like what I said. Is like, play these games, like these games. Some of them are technically games. A lot of them. I mean, what makes a game? I mean, do you, if you just click next to look at some poorly drawn anime nudie shit. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe that qualifies as a game for you. That's awesome. I'm not going to say it's not a game if that's what you consider a game. Yeah. Um, but the, then you look at little things like, well, if you have an option to make two choices, then does that all all of a sudden just become a game? Then even though that's basically it, you can say it's one of those. Pick well, it I, I, I mean, you can ask EA that about Mass Effect. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean that, that it's an interesting point, but I like the definition of game, at least in like the video game sense, is very broad and arbitrary. And there are lots of people who will who will jump and say that visual novels are not games. Even and a lot of visual novel fans that I know will like straight up say that. But then there are visual not or there are games that have visual novel elements, and we get into this muddy water of like not all X is Y, but all Y is X. And what can you really do about it? I will say this does sound oddly like, I mean, it does tweak me just a little bit of the wrong way, which in my line of work shouldn't. But when somebody has audible and they're like, yeah, I just read uh, whatever. It was like, oh, shit. I was like, no, I, I read it on audible. It's like. That that's not that's not reading. <laughs> I, I mean, you you've ingested the contents of that book, but yeah, you you haven't like sat down and read it. it then I kind of feel I, like I'm like I've devolved to the point of the argument where I'm trying to win on a technicality, which just means you've instantly lost the argument. I was like, or maybe you did read it. It's you and you've taken it. Maybe the reading needs to get a better definition. Yeah, like and and the the whole the whole concept about media consumption. Anyways, let's whine some more about it. Uh up next is hate mail from RK. And they said, for sure, wine is a better and faster way of playing anything pre-2008. Before I jumped to Linux full-time, even being on Windows 7 in Vlovs, lots of fighting Windows settings manager, and heavily modified INI files for vague hope that it A runs and B doesn't crash the second you click play. And like that, that, was, that was kind of like an interesting thing. Like if if you go read the the wine on Sigwin project page, they say this is a terrible idea. But there is a use case in the sense that Windows is actually pretty good for backwards compatibility sometimes. Mm-hmm. And when Except it's when not, wasn't. then you need to have an implementation of the older version of the API so that the application can work. Which is why I have mixed feelings about developers actually targeting wine as a Win32 API as opposed to just targeting win 32 natively yeah uh i think wine's an excellent tool for going back and playing things much like it, it's you know for me it's a newer version of dos box because there's going to be stuff with older games where you're going to have a better chance using wine getting it up and running versus trying to what are you going to go dig up a copy of windows 9x and so well i know there's some retro like, oh, I gotta, yeah, the retro yeah. thing is uh, is definitely growing nowadays. Uh, YouTube channels like the Eight Bit Guy and the Nostalgia Fox Dog Nerd, something like that. Yeah, Foxy's channel. Uh, it's uh, it's definitely on the rise, and Wine is pretty good. And I'm not entirely sure I like the idea of devs targeting Wine. Because oh, that's, no. yeah, no, that's just not going to, 
It will well, here, allow but, the game to run on Linux, yes, but it won't make it a Linux game. <laughs> no, but like when my, my my point is like when Win32 goes away, and it will, Microsoft will kill that shit because they want UWP to be their new vendor lock-in. Yeah. <laughs> Wine will be the only remaining Win32 Dude, API. That didn't you get the memo uh, Microsoft by GitHub? They love open source. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they, they love how much money it makes them. That's what they love. Mm. More Anyways. about that on our Wednesday show. That that We've already gotten yeah. some uh, feedback mm-hmm. on that. Uh, last but not least, uh, before we went into the segment, Jordan's like, how old is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's this week, apparently. <laughs> Disiga, Disiga, to D- review. Disgaea. Harry the Berry, if that is their real name. For You're fuck's a wizard, sake. Harry the Berry. You're a Berry, Harry. Get anything else? No. All right. I'm done. For <laughs> fuck's sake, talk about the game already. Seven minutes, just retarded graphics, talk, exclamation point, tiny impotent fist waved at the internet. Um, no. I do believe we got to the game, and uh, we didn't yeah, hate we, it. We, we talked about <laughs> it at length. I streamed it a couple times. You you see the me and me definitely wanted to do a how-to video on how to use the um, drag button That's, on the yeah, password yeah, forward. and like post that and link to it to his comment. <laughs> <laughs> but then that would require effort. So we decided not to do that. Yeah, more effort than he put into this particular. Uh, hey, it's an actual hate mail. It, it's real <laughs> actual hate, hate mail. It's actual hate mail. Yes, and I it's, mean, it's, it's a rarity. We got to we got to cherish it whenever we get it. How far? How, how much at the bottom? How hard are you scraping the fucking bowl that you're down to our fucking review of this game? Yeah, he no. This is the kind of person that you know he's just trolling around the internet looking for someone to validate his opinion about something. In this case, it was this guy too, and he just like, oh, maybe these guys will uh, share the same opinion as I do. It's like, just fucking get to it. Uh, I mean, and fun and funnily enough, by talking ooh. about it, we validated his existence. Go us! <laughs> All right, that's kind of brilliant. Um, because I think. On that bombshell, we're going to cue the music. You'd always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's brilliant. Maybe one day we'll do that elusive early show because we're about a year behind on those. Um, if you want to talk to me, at Vince Stone on Twitter, uh, maybe there, uh, Google+. Plus. I'm very virulent. Uh, vil- virulent? I don't know. Anyway, that sounds you're, sexy. You're virus-ridden, yeah. Yes, it's delicious. Get some of that. Um... <laughs> I, I'm Jordan Swung. My existence is entirely invalidated because, I don't know, space communism. You can find me at Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan sure Swung on Google+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently my existence is entirely invalid. <laughs> you can find me at Unaccounted For on Twitter or you plus invalid. on Google+. Plus. <laughs> Motherfuckers, what have we learned this week? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> just nothing. <laughs> Something about a rabbi. I, I I I learned that I should mash F twelve in a game where Steve Over- Steam Overlay doesn't work. Yeah, Steve in Overlay. the hopes that I can bring up uh, yes, Steve Overlay. Steve yeah, Overlay. In, the, in the hopes that I can bring up the Chrome Dev Tools. That's that's what I learned. And credits. Bird, baby, bird. Disco and I was listening to some Wild Cherry on the way home. Burn the mother down. Oh, yes. Thanks, everyone, for making this shit possible. This is episode 303. Oh, yes. We're, we're 101 away from that episode, from the lost episode. By yeah, the way, we totally, totally should, like, there. fucking skip four. We should totally, like, skip week 404. You know, and just go straight to 405. Then, But, yeah. but here, here on episode 405, we're like, man, last week, 404 was awesome. We had Linus Torvalds on, <laughs> uh, Gabe <Yeah>. Newell. <laughs> And no, we, listen, we, we had a Jello wrestling match with <laughs> Richard Stallman versus <laughs> Gabe Newell. <laughs> Stallman called in over Skype. Yeah. It'll be brutal. Gabe reinforced <laughs> the fact that Max are the future of virtual reality. Yes. Because that's the thing that needs to happen. Oh, see, no. no, we, we no, no totally I've heard, heard that argument. Oh, yeah, VR is the future, but it's not the present. Well, I'm living in the present, motherfucker. Where the fuck is it? 
The present doesn't exist, Pedro. There's just the past and the future. Dying fire, everyone. We love you. Five dudes.